Hey, what's up guys? Toogie here, back again with another episode of A Nation United, Finland Edition, right here on NHL 19. In the last episode, we finally pulled the trigger on a couple of trades that had been often thought about over the past few seasons. However, and I talked about this in the update video that I had before I went out to Vancouver, uh, that was that I had personally dropped the ball with how much I had done in terms of, you know, having videos done to be scheduled to go out during the week. Dropped the ball on that, only had one episode of each hockey series, and admittedly, with that last Finnish episode, or the last Finland episode, I'm not going to say it was rushed, but I'm certainly not going to say that I sit here and agree with all of my decisions in that last episode. There were the two big trades, Kippersoft dealt to acquire... Some defensive help with Marcus Nunivara, who we had, of course, dealt before. And trading Sebastian Ajo and company to Buffalo for Uko Pekka Lukanen. Now, as you would expect, we're not quite done, I would assume. Uh, this team could still use a little bit of extra tweaking. And again, I'm not going to say that uh, I completely disagree with the moves I had made in that last episode. But I may have done some things just a tad bit differently, just a little bit. I think the main thing here is that with Lukanen, who is the top goaltender that we could possibly have, uh, it's certainly nice to have him on this team, but obviously it makes someone like Yukaloxo just a little bit expendable. Hell, his uh, struggles this year, I don't even know if that's necessarily fair. I mean, a 907 isn't ideal, but... His struggles this year, four wins and 14 appearances, was one of the catalysts for us going out and getting Lukanen, and again, it makes him just a tad bit expendable at this point. This team was built upon a ridiculous offense. The unfortunate thing is, with the defense, is that we don't have that many great options, and I'll show you the top defensemen in the league right now through the whole player search feature, but surprise, surprise, in terms of like top finished defensemen, there aren't that many. And we kind of knew that would be an issue, so we kind of went with the glass cannon approach offensively. And the team still isn't in that bad of a spot. Now, Rantanen can't be dealt. Simon Tavall, Kako, we can do with what we want. Patrick Line is going to be here for six of the seven years. We know that, at the very least. Brad Lambert, of course, here. Tara Vinen's going to be going nowhere. We have Lidman as well. And then someone like Casper Bjorkvist, uh, who right now can't be dealt but is on an expiring deal, will probably end up going sometime soon as well. The team itself isn't in an awful situation, but obviously a more well-rounded approach is necessary. So whether or not we end up making another deal here, it's likely, I would say, at least in terms of bumping up the defensive help, but again, the limited options that we have kind of make it difficult. Now in terms of goaltenders, the highest rated goalie in the game right now is Lukanen. And he was our only elite option. Unfortunately, there isn't anybody else. Smiths, that's Pedro, right? Yeah, Pedro Smiths, who we've seen before, is American. Filatov, obviously not Finnish. UC Saros was the only other option. A lot of you guys are pointing him out as well. But, uh, yeah, he's been okay. You know, pretty pretty strong numbers, pretty solid numbers. But at 30 years old, two years left at 5 mil, it, it was an option. I'm not going to say it wasn't. But in terms of getting Lukanen, that was probably the best time to do it. And really, those were the only two options. We go out and get Lukanen. We maybe pick up Soros and let Loxo develop. See what happens from there. Again, whether or not the Lukanen option was the best way to go, I'm not sure. I mean, in terms of being like, oh yeah, okay, send our elite goalie down to the AHL, pick up Soros for the next year or two until our goalie's ready, take it from there. That's not a bad way to go. The unfortunate thing, of course, is that the expectations are a little bit high because offensively we should be doing quite well. We are average at best. It's pretty much the best way to look at it. Someone was telling me to look at Lamb as well. Uh, Canadian. Ronald Lamb, the Canadian. So, like I said, in terms of our options, 
right now, I mean, we already have Lukanen, right? We're going with him. There's no doubt about it. But obviously there were some other possibilities, at least one other road where it would have made sense to go down. And then defensively, in terms of high-rated options, now Ole Olevi did develop in this run. The downside is he has seven points in 50 games. <laughs> Which, again, defensemen aren't just judged off of that, but my god, that contract. He's going to be even more expensive when that deal is up. And taking a look here right now, a career high of 32 points in the NHL. He had 33 points in the AHL. He hits, he blocks. The giveaway to takeaway ratio is horrible for this season. It's it's not great, and traditionally, I mean, it yeah, it hasn't been great. It's it's tough when he is the highest rated option. Now one has to wonder, of course, Vancouver, you know, how good have they been or whatever. But still, still to give up that much, knowing that they don't want to trade him, that would be more expensive than it's worth, right? I think we could agree with that. The next highest rated option is not Odeline, unfortunately, but that does show the Vancouver defensive situation is pretty well set up. The next highest rated option is Thomas Hikala of the Florida Panthers. 24-year-old was the 8th overall pick in 2019, certainly who we probably should have gone for. Two years left at $6.24 million, and again, he is not a major point getter whatsoever. So if you look at him from a defensive standpoint, he's physical, he hits, and at the very least, the giveaway takeaway is a little bit better. I mean, certainly a half-decent option, but when you look at that trade value bar, and knowing that they probably don't want to trade him, how expensive is he going to be, and is it even going to be worth it? I mean, again, on a good team with a strong goaltender, maybe his numbers look a little bit better, but for what we would have to give up, that is a massive, massive risk. You have Rasmus Ristolainen, who we let go of. He has 15 points this year, making 6.4 over the next four years with the Red Wings. And in terms of how he plays, relatively physical, good shot blocker. I mean, the giveaway to takeaway ratio isn't great and traditionally hasn't been great. Do we want to pay six million bucks for a 20 point defenseman? That was often the issue. So it's no real surprise, of course, that we ended up going with such an offensively heavy setup. And I still think in a way it could work in, in a way we need it to work because we really don't have that many options. Henry Okiharu is one of the others. 5.4 million for the next three years. Not a big point getter for Chicago has one 20-point season in his career. As you see all the years that we've simmed through thus far, it's kind of ridiculous, actually, that we're this far into it. Not a heavy hitter. Block shots. The giveaway-to-takeaway ratio isn't great at all. We don't have that many elite defensemen that we can pick up. Miro Haskinen somehow hasn't developed. I mean, an 86 is all right, but obviously he never took that next step forward. Again, he's a 20-point guy. He had one 30-point year in his rookie season. Doesn't appear to have that much power play time traditionally. But he hits, he blocks, and at the very least, I mean, the giveaway-takeaway ratio is a little bit better for him. But I guess case in point as to why it was like, hey, let's hope to God our defense actually develops, and they really haven't. So in terms of any deals, it's tough to say exactly what we should do I mean what we could do sure we could try to get some deals done of course there were a lot of draft picks involved in the uh, past couple of trades actually not, not that bad but we do have Chicago's first we do have a very high value goaltender that we need to move more than likely because he is on an expiring deal a little bit of extra defensive help would certainly be nice but in terms of a safe bet for one of those top defensemen? I don't know. Like, who do you possibly name a safe bet? And then again, not to mention, we are perhaps just a little bit too top-heavy at the moment. I don't necessarily 
want to shop a Simon Tavall. The addition of Ludman has really changed the outlook of this team. The addition of Patrick Line has really changed the outlook of this team and who we have to try and stay loyal to. 4.6 million bucks. And the issue here is who the hell do we move to afford anybody? If we do pick up one of those defensemen, I mean, Nunavar is here at 6.2 for the next two years. We are free to move him if we want to. Again, we acquired him in the last episode because at the very least, you know, he's not a big point getter, but he wasn't as expensive as some of the other guys, but similar production, especially in terms of hits, blocks, giveaways, takeaways. He was at least a slightly cheaper option. It's, it's a rough spot to be in. And unfortunately, this team struggling as much as they have been. It, it's going to get a little bit painful, I think. We're going to definitely lose some players to free agency via RFA status. I'm not entirely sure how I want to try to dig us out of this situation. Now, in fairness, we haven't really seen too much of this team since the deals have gone down, and I think that's probably going to be the best way to handle it, but I wanted to take a look at the full situation here before we really got going. I want to see how we do. Hopefully, we can end up finding just a little bit of success. Again, I think the teams, I think the lineups are pretty much as good as they're going to get. I mean, again, that top line doing relatively well. I think we wait to see what the results are moving forward. And hopefully, things are looking a little bit better. But obviously, the defensive numbers right now aren't great. So, we will see what the ungodly uh, Uko Pekka Lukanen can do for us over the next month. Hopefully, get us that much closer to a playoff spot. And if that's the case, then cool. We do what we have to do and probably trade our backup goaltender here and maybe bolster up the defense a little bit. I would hate to think in a way that we would be somehow in a position to sell, and I doubt we would be. Wouldn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense unless there were some top prospects coming up in the draft. Right now, thankfully, we're doing pretty damn well. And I think some of the uh, stories of our early demise this season may have been just that, a tad bit early, as we finally lose our first game of the month against the San Jose Sharks. We respond with back-to-back -back wins over New Jersey and over Toronto. Now, success over the last three weeks, that doesn't necessarily mean that we shouldn't go out and get defensive help, but it is going to be interesting to look at the stats here at this point. Only two losses thus far, second in overtime to the Anaheim Ducks. And just like that, we're back in the hunt for at least a top three spot. But New Jersey and Philly have some pretty crazy separation. So right now, it's looking like hopefully we can, you know, get into that three seed from the Metro. But let's take a look at these numbers and double check whether or not it's worth making a move from this point on. So Lukanen's save percentage has only dropped from a 946 to a 945. So we're looking pretty good there. He hasn't had any trouble adapting. I care a little bit more about the defense. Tommy Tierweinen is 21, a low elite. I mean, I don't really plan on getting rid of him. 13 points. He's a plus one on the year. Again, not that plus minus is a great stat, but his numbers are looking a little bit better. He hits, he blocks. The giveaway takeaway uh, take ratio isn't all that bad. Uh, last year, though, oof, the giveaways, good lord. Uh, Marcus Nudivara was minus 10. He's now minus 6. Has 11 points on the year. I don't think we're going to be flipping him immediately. More than likely, we will keep him around. So it's not too bad. Essa Kervainen up to 21 points and even rating. Matty uh, Vertanen's plus minus has also begun to drop a little bit, which is good. 17 points on the year. Heinola 9 points and a minus 3. And Matty Kuka, 7 points and a plus 14. Not too shabby. Obviously, a little bit of extra defensive help would be nice. Now, here's the issue, right? I mean, Matty Kuka isn't going to get that much better in terms of an overall. He's doing really well, though. <laughs> it's tough to justify getting rid of a player like that. You know, sure, he's the lowest rated, but he's actually doing pretty damn well. Capo Caco right now, 
up to a wonderful 50 points. I mean, 50 and 60 isn't bad, but I mean, he was nearly point a game last year, so it's a slightly disappointing pace. Simon Tevall, 15 goals, 35 assists. Rantanen almost up to 30 goals. Patrick Laine almost up to 30 goals. Two goals, the reverse Brandon Peary for Tevo Teravainen. Two goals, 22 assists. Lambert doing all right. Bjorkvist, 20 points. Louis with 14. Ludman up to 10 goals on the year. And Lekkonen, Virta, and Repo not doing too badly. Of course, the issue with this team is we're just we're not getting the most out of a lot of these guys, unfortunately. Uh, obviously, having Patrick Laine playing on the second line or Lambert playing on the second line, it's going to hurt a little bit. And Ludman already being a second line guy at 18 years old is freaking outrageous. <sighs> the issue is we were pretty damn successful. Now, I think I'm going to double check. I highly doubt that any players that would be eligible for us to acquire that they'll actually be on the block. That is, the odds of that, something that helpful actually occurring and, you know, being an option for us, pretty damn slim, unfortunately. So, it's as it is, it's not looking that good. So, we do have, of course, a goaltender where it makes all the sense in the world to trade him. It's just a matter of what defenseman makes the most sense. Unfortunately, White here, Abel White, is from Denmark, as one would have assumed. Ryan Pollock is there, but of course, nobody useful. Oh man, I saw a Ghost Bear, and I'm like, yes, please, and no. No, 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 didn't work out. Barrett and Cabina, Schwartz and Fabry. If we're going to get anybody, it's going to be expensive. Very... Very expensive. But that's okay. We can make it work. I hope. <laughs> we do have Chicago's pick as well. So hopefully we can make it work. Let's go double check amongst our finished defensive options. Who's available and who actually makes sense to go after here. As unfortunately I hit the wrong button. Not big fan of how that's set up. Go over here, change that. Defense, please. Okay, menu lag. You calm down there. There we go. So, I mean, in terms of getting Ole Levy, that is, oof, that's an expensive price. 12 points on the year for Ole Levy. Big minute, uh, big minute guy for them. But man, how expensive is he going to be once that contract is up is all I can think. That is a big time asking price. Again, aside from him, the best option is Thomas Hikola, who has nine points. He is not doing well in Florida. A true defensive D-man. So I wouldn't expect him to be a big point getter. Pro Scout assessments, he'd be a top four defenseman for us, which makes sense. I mean, that's his role. I'd prefer him to be a top defenseman for me. So he's never going to be a big point getter. Does hit, does block. The giveaway takeaway ratio is okay. But again, just for how expensive he's going to be. I think the mistake of letting go of Rasmus Ristolainen is one that's going to continue to haunt. But in terms of hitting, his aggressiveness seems to be dropping. Uh, the block shots will even out. Let's see, this year, 18 points in 59 games. 31 years old, though, so at this point, risking diminishing returns for Risto for how expensive he would be. And then Yoki Haru, I mean, he's another relatively cheap option. More along the lines of, you know, who we of who we've already have, rather than a, a top-notch game-changer. Giveaway takeaways are brutal, and he doesn't hit. I think it has to be, if it's going to be anybody, I mean, it has to be Hikala, or it has to be Ole Levy. And as far as, again, how expensive this is going to be, something has to be done. So think of Florida and Vancouver. I need to double check who is available on the draft board this year. I am 99% sure... 
that there wasn't anybody who was worth it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have moved draft picks as freely as we did in the last episode. Yeah, there was nobody. So, there makes no... Uh, I mean, it just makes no sense whatsoever. I was going to say, it makes no sense, which it's, it's true. There's no sense in keeping the Chicago pick that we have. It makes sense to use it. Just the question is, Hikala or Ole Levy? Hikala's 24. I mean, a slight chance of him getting better, but the issue is he's a true defensive D-man. He's never going to be a big-time point guy. Whereas with Ole Levy and the Canucks, now he is going to be more expensive. Extremely expensive, but with those stats, I could at least imagine him putting up a bit more in terms of points. He's three years older. When did the Hikala contract expire? Because I think that could play a pretty big factor too if RFA status is involved, and I don't believe it is based off of when his deal is up. Still pretty rough, though. I think if we're going after anybody, we have to target Olya Levy and then hope that the offense really starts to shine through. And if he's too expensive, then so be it, and we'll go after Hikala. But I want to try to bring in some defensive reinforcements, right? So, Timu Lakso, I would be over the cap, obviously. We're going to look to move a defenseman. They could kind of use a goaltending prospect. is not going to get any better. And I'd give him an option between uh, Mikey DiPietro, and who's already, you know, there with Lakso. So, I, I can kind of sort of justify that. The defenseman I'd have to add to this, though... That's the question, and it would have to be Nudivara, Heinola, or Kervainen. And I think it would have to be Vili Heinola. Because Kervainen's still putting up points, and we just reacquired Nudivara. I don't know if I'd want to, you know, flip him to try and get somebody better when I'd prefer to use those two, I guess, in tandem. But... I mean, think about that. The amount of money that we'd you know, be on the hook for with Nunivara, it's pretty rough. So going with, say, Yalevi, Tirvainen, Vertan, and Heinelucker, Vertanen, it's not too bad. It's not that bad to kind of keep who we already have. I mean, it's got to be Heinelucker or it's got to be Nunivara. And again, Heinelucker hasn't been great. He's got two years left as well. I think we'll try to use him first. Got to see if there's anybody I can bring back in this deal. And to be honest, if it's a non-Finn, I don't really care. Even if it's Jensen, we'll just have him sit in the AHL for the rest of the year. But there's no way that goes through on its own. All right, so if we throw in a first-round pick from Chicago because it's absolutely useless to us, what are we looking like now? And I'm not surprised. We're not even close. If I take out Heinola and throw in Nudivara, which I don't really like in theory, and it won't go through anyway, we are still so far off of being able to pull off a deal of this caliber. And one could argue that, you know, the Kiprasov deal would have been a little bit better to aim a little bit higher, and I don't disagree. Again, that's... I think it's the Kiprasov trade from the last episode more than anything that I'm like, man, what the hell was I thinking? Which happens. I'm not going to say every move I make in the series is perfect by any stretch of the imagination, especially, too, with the way the series have been this year where there's been just too many breaks in between, and I feel like we haven't really been able to catch our stride with the series for the majority of NHL 19. But if I'm looking here, I mean... I think we gotta go talk to Florida because I think the asking price is just too damn high. I mean, otherwise we're risking, put it this way, we're risking losing one of our young guys anyway, right? We really are. I mean, Capocacco is up at the end of this year. That is a dangerous, dangerous thing. So we'll go talk to Florida and we'll see just how close to a deal we are. And hopefully with Hikolo, we're just a little bit closer. 
So let's see what we can do here with Loxo, a first, I mean, yeah, too far off. Not that I expected that to go through, but still. Uh, let's go to Heinola at 3-5. Save us a little bit more money. Wow. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that to go through, but I'll take it. So it's Loxo, the goaltending prospect, Heinola, the defenseman, and the Chicago first that's literally worthless to us. And we end up getting the second highest rated finished defenseman in the game right now, that being Thomas Hikala. Now, whether or not it's worth spending more than $12.5 million on two defensemen here that are not major point getters, that's, that's the big time question, isn't it? But there's no denying our defense just improved quite a bit, at least in theory. So if we go best lines, and again, I'd probably prefer to have Line A on that side, Bjorkvist on that side, and then from here it's kind of irrelevant. We'll just keep Lekin and yeah, I'll put Lekin on that side. It's fine. Defensively, then Hikala and Tirvainen, which is a pretty good one-two punch. Tirvainen's at least a little bit more offensive. They're both listed as defensive D-men, though. I think for Tannen and Hikala, there's a good mix. And then I'd probably prefer... What if I even go Kervainen and Tirvainen and then Nudivara and Kuka? Now, we wouldn't be getting the most out of Nudivara necessarily, but it's at least pretty well-rounded in terms of talent. Uh, we'll go best lines down in the AHL really quickly. So we have $4 million in space because that I was not expecting that to go through. But I'm pretty sure that's the last move we can really make here. I think the big thing is just special teams wise and what we'd be looking at. I think having Vertanen and Kervainen on the power play isn't the worst idea, but with the offense that we have, I mean, Hikola and Nidivaro, we might not even necessarily you know, need to have them on the power play, right? I mean, we have we have Rantanen, we have Line. We have Lambert, who is there as well. And then Simon Taval, Teravine, and Kako. So who's missing out on power play time that could use it? Ludman could absolutely use the extra power play time. Say we take out Nudivara, and how that could be Bjorkvist, who would uh, benefit pretty heavily from it. Arteri Lekkinen would also benefit quite heavily from that extra power play time. It's not necessarily the worst way to go, but maybe we just go with those two. Have Capo Caco up on that top power play as well, just because that would be simply outrageous. So I think we go with a decent little setup. Now, unfortunately, of course, the lefty-righty dynamic isn't going to be perfect. I could put Simon Taval over there. It's not going to work out that well. But say we do something like this, that is one hell of a power play. Regardless of how that's set up, that is uh, one hell of a power play. And then having, you know, Ludman, Vertanen, and Bjorkvist there, it's also not too bad. And again, the amount of right-handed shots. We could actually play that to be half-decent. Maybe even have Lambert there instead of Kako. And then go with a little setup like that to at least have lefties and righties. Like, that top power play unit is friggin' outrageous. And what they should be capable of. Again, looking in between the pipes... This is not what I envisioned this team to be even half a season ago. I mean, especially heading into the last offseason where it's like, oh, here's Sebastian Ajo, and Sebastian Ajo's already off this team, and so many things have changed. I think to avoid just making so many changes, and to be honest, maybe I've already made you know one or two changes too many with that last trade there with Florida... Perhaps that'll completely disrupt the momentum that this team had. But I think at the very least, just as, wow, we lose 6 nothing to Colorado. I think at the very least, we need to, uh, we need to calm down on the moves at this point. 
let this team play, see what the hell they're capable of, and take it from there. And whatever, whatever comes through the final stretch of this season, we make the most of it, hopefully in the playoffs and then through the offseason. But so many different direction changes... I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think that's fairly evident. Uh, certainly second-guessing and questioning a lot of the moves that we've made. And at the very least, this team's losing more than I would have hoped. And it's now scaring me into thinking that, again, maybe too many changes were made. But at the very least, we're in a good spot. I mean, if we have to lose people in the upcoming season, so be it. But yeah, very, very weird spot to be in right now. Hekel is a minus 24. Oh my god. Has the goaltending fallen off or is the defense just that bad? Looking and save percentage has dropped. Not drastically, but it has still dropped. We are not exactly a guarantee to make the playoffs right now either, which is pretty scary. Let's keep moving on here. And this was the thing. Like I knew my plan initially for this was to build through the draft, but the more free agents that became available, the more you know, the more second guessing and maybe the more rash decisions that we've ended up making. I don't want to say it's put the team into an unrecognizable state, but you know, certainly it's like okay, here we go. We're down the road. Nope, left turn. Down the road. All right. Well, now we're going. To, nope, quick right. Like it's. In theory, you could say it's been tough for the team to find its footing. And a 36-27-14 record, I would say, regardless of any iteration, any form of the team we've put out on the ice, we should be better than that. Thankfully, we are a playoff team, thanks to an abysmal Atlantic division. We are playoff bound. Which I am incredibly thankful for. <laughs> Because this team may very well be built for the playoffs. At least I hope that once we make the playoffs, we're good to go. The 14 overtime slash shootout losses have been incredibly beneficial to our cause of making the postseason. And we do end the regular season off the back of three straight wins. Four wins out of five in April. And again, we are playoff bound. The Hawks might not be. Thanks to a lack of overtime losses, they are out, unfortunately. But looking here, we are... Actually, some teams still have games left. We'll sim one more day. We are due to be playing the Tampa Bay Lightning in that Atlantic Division matchup. The weaker Atlantic Division, although the top two teams were pretty damn good, including Buffalo, who we robbed of Lucan and... When we probably shouldn't have, but that's okay. 94 points, so we avoid a meeting with the Flyers. We'll technically take on a team with two more points. It was going to be a relatively rough way to go regardless. Miko Rantanen led this team in points just over one point a game. We'll take a look at the stats here to wind down the season. I do want to start with goaltenders, of course, where Lukanen ended up finishing the year with a 9.38. Not too bad. I mean, the save percentage dropped once he got here, but that's that's a Vesna winner right there. I mean, that's a true game changer between the pipes, at least in theory. And Billy Huso as a backup actually wasn't that bad with a 9.15 save percentage. Defensively, Kurvainen finishes the year with 27 points and a plus 9. Vertanen with 24 points, which isn't too bad. Tiervainen with 15. Nunivara, 14. 12 for Hikala. Which, again, at the very least, we didn't give up anything that was overly valuable to us. We gave up a mad defenseman. We gave up a first-round pick that had absolutely no value to us aside from trading for a good player. And we gave up a goalie prospect that had to go. Matty Kuka with 9 points and a plus 11. I don't know what to make of this defense. I really don't. I don't know what to expect from them. Forward-wise, Rantanen was the only guy at a point per game. 83 points in 82. Simon Tyval with 78 points, which is only down by one from last year. He scored more goals, though, which is quite nice. Capocacco with 68 points, so down from last year's 80. 
but still not a bad total, all things considered. Patrick Line finishes with 60 points, which is a pretty big disappointment, but he did score 37 goals. So, I mean, that's what we got him for. Brad Lambert with 50 points. Up from last year's total, just, ba- uh, just barely. The plus-minus is a little bit better as well. Tavo Teravainen, only five goals, but 32 assists, good for 37 points. That is incredibly disappointing. And, yeah, needless to say, having to stay loyal to him for three more seasons after this is now an extremely, extremely rough situation, which, again, we haven't gone full loyalty system like we have in Carolina, we kept it more straightforward, but I did that because I didn't want to be wheeling and dealing players, and obviously, it, you know, it's supposed to make me think a little bit more about, you know, just reaction signing someone like Patrick Line. It didn't help, and we'll see if it costs me down the road. Casper Bjorkvist, his final season here, simply based off the money, 30-point guy, not too bad. Uh, never really hit the point totals, though, uh, that he had before he signed here. Tommy Ludman, unfortunately, uh, not exactly Calder-worthy with 29 points. Luhi with 26 points, 58 games. Lekkinen, I mean, he bounced back well, but obviously we weren't exactly putting him in a position to succeed. Repo with 9 points, 8 for Virta. So the fourth line wasn't that bad, actually, uh, beyond the midway points of the season. So overall, I mean, you could say this team's built for the playoffs with a decent defense, there's really no major game changer we can have on defense. They're just that player doesn't exist. But we have the best goaltender available and an ungodly offense. Hopefully that is enough come playoff time. Now around the league, Jack Hughes led the way. The only player to break 90 points. McDavid was up there, so right and tied Connor McDavid. Uh, Anton Lundell was also up there. Who man, if he had ended up being a part of this team, and of course Simon Tavall is up there as well. Goal scoring wise, Hughes the only guy to hit 50. He pulled Colson, Zegers, Newhook. No real surprise, of course, to see created players doing so well, even if they're real. Like, you know, Hughes pulled Colson, Zegers, and Newhook. Uh, it's just the way they perform in this game. Created players always seem to score at a higher rate for whatever reason. Now, I do want to take a look at defensemen, where OEL led the way with 68 points. Got other guys up there like Quinn Hughes, who probably led the way for goals. He did. What I want to see for defensemen is, number one, like, the max takeaway is 50. 50. Which seems a bit low. So really, any defenseman who's around 40 takeaways on the year is actually pretty good. So, someone like Tiervinen, not too bad. The giveaways could have been a little bit lower, though. Don't really want it approaching 90. Uh, Marcus Nudivara wasn't that bad in terms of takeaways. Again, uh, you know, the, the giveaway number was pretty strong. Erho uh, the giveaway takeaway numbers, of course, he was a, a lower end option. It just would have been like moving deck chairs had we acquired him in theory. Uh, Risto was okay. Again, the giveaway number wasn't tremendous. It's just basically double checking here. Like, okay, out of finish options like Valamaki, you know, how do these guys measure up? Mira Haskinen as well. You know, maybe Haskinen could have been a half decent option to acquire. Uh, the one guy you're not seeing yet until now is Ole Levy, 36. So. It's it's interesting, you know, to look at those numbers, have them factor in, but then you know, because you're you're so limited in the amount of stats that you have in terms of tracking a defensive defenseman and their value, uh, aside from something like takeaways, of course. And it would be nice to have more advanced stats in the game. Obviously, I see you know what MLB the show is able to track. I'll give them credit for that. It's one of the few things I'll give that game credit for uh, this year. But, you know, all the advanced stats and everything that they have in franchise mode, you can tell who is a performing player. And that's one of the downsides that we have to NHL, where the value of a defensive, or really the value of defensemen are mainly down to the points. It's, you know, you don't have too much to go off to tell, okay, well, this guy's a defensive defenseman, but at least he's effective. So, anyway, a season's in the books. A postseason is about to begin. This team, in theory, 
should be top heavy enough to storm their way to success. The defense is very well rounded, it's not amazing, but I've won Stanley Cups with weaker defenses, and technically we have the best goddamn goaltender in the NHL right now. Will we find success? Pull the lever on the slot machine and we'll find out, but we are taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning in the next episode. Let me know what you thought of this one in terms of the trade. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm, I'm second guessing a lot of moves that I've been making. And I think it's, it's out of pressure of wanting to succeed because the history of Nations United series haven't all been great in terms of success. And maybe it's a bit too early to be panicking, but I want to make sure that we're actually successful. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. You know the deal. Support the video, support the channel. Leave a like, subscribe, all that happy fun stuff. I will see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one. Take it easy. I'll see you later.